up guys welcome back into the channel today we're going to be continuing our hidden gem series on mlb the show 23 talking about third basemen so we're going to detail 10 third basemen for you to know in franchise mode that could potentially help your team in a sneaky good way let's go ahead and jump right into it we're going to start off this list with a couple of names that were presented in a comment by a subscriber so i do really appreciate these pointed out players from anthony so with that first spot but we're going to talk about Jake Berger on the White Sox. This is a player that was a fantastic call out because he is going to absolutely destroy lefties with a 80 contact versus left and 76 power on that side. He's not necessarily great in his plate vision or discipline, but he's got decent enough clutch. So that's going to come in handy. And he's actually somewhat athletic. Unfortunately, his fielding capabilities are not going to be fantastic. So this is going to be much more of a a batter for you uh, an offensive sided player because his fielding and his reaction aren't great you will be able to develop those a little bit because he's 26 years old and he does have those alternate positions where he can play first and second you could probably play him as a dh but nonetheless i think that at 26 years old with that c potential he does provide a little bit of development capability and he'll be able to be around for your organization for quite a while and the next player to talk about that was suggested by the same subscriber is tyler freeman a third baseman for for the Guardians. A 67 overall B potential third baseman that's 23 years old. It's not too often we get into the prospects this early into a video, but this subscriber brings up a really important point, which is that Tyler Freeman is going to be blocked at this position by Jose Ramirez, who is a fantastic third baseman and a player that is going to be very hard to get out of this lineup. So that provides some expendability to Tyler Freeman, a player that you could probably go out and acquire, and it's not going to cause much harm to the Guardians organization. He does provide some value with a good plate vision to start off with. He's a little bit weak at the plate in both contact and power, but not bad for a 23-year-old 67 overall. Lots of room for growth, of course, with that B potential. And on the defensive side, he's got a pretty good arm and he starts off with decent enough fielding that we know that this player can develop into a really good third baseman offensively and defensively. So you should definitely try to target him if you're looking for a higher end developmental prospect that can help you in the long run in franchise mode. The next player that I wanted to highlight on this list is going to be highlighted for a different reason. He is a 77 overall A potential, so this is going to be potentially one of the most expensive players to acquire on this list. But as a Pirates fan, I know all too well the benefits of getting him into another organization. He's 26 years old with A potential at a 77 overall, which is a fantastic combination. He's a great defender, and he's very good against lefties. But the real reason that he's on this list is because of his confidence contract at only 8.8 .8 million dollars per year for eight years he's going to be super inexpensive for you as a high-end developmental player in your organization he might be a little bit expensive for his overall at first but a couple of years down the line you're going to have a very inexpensive elite third baseman and that's why i have to include him on this list because of the contract side of things he has the fighter quirk performs better in the ninth inning or later so he's going to be clutch in those specific scenarios so this is a player that if you have the resources to go out and get an a potential high-end guy i would go after cabrian hayes the pirates aren't a competitive team yet and that means that they're willing to make these deals i don't know that they ever will trade away cabrian hayes but in a franchise you can certainly justify it and this is a guy that you should try to target because he does have that capability at the plate he's a fantastic defender and like i said that contract can end up being fantastic for you in the long run. With the fourth spot on this list, I wanted to highlight Yandy Diaz, who is one of those veteran players that I think you can plug into a lineup and have a lot of success with. This is a guy that has 76 contact versus righties, 86 versus lefties, you know, kind of average power in there, but really good plate vision and plate discipline. His clutch is at 67, which is going to hurt a little bit, but he is able to generate contact, which is really, really good for you. He's able to foul off some balls, which is going to help. He's got decent durability, and he's not 
not going to be a total liability on the defensive side. He does have the ability to play first base, second base, and left field, which is kind of a nice flexibility to have. You don't get a lot of players here that are able to play infield and that corner outfield spot, so that's kind of nice. His fielding, his reaction are serviceable enough. It's a shame that his arm strength isn't better, but he's got an accurate arm, so you're not going to see him make any crazy throwouts, but he's going to be serviceable enough that he's not going to cause any problems for you, and he does provide significant value at the plate. The next player on this list is going to be Josh Rojas, a Diamondbacks third baseman, who a lot of people might shy away from right off the bat, but I think is going to provide a lot of value for you if you really focus on training him up and developing him well. He's at 28 years old, so he doesn't have any prime years of development left. He can still go up until he's about that age of 30, and even past that, you'll still be able to get good production out of him and, and potentially get increases to certain ratings. Starting off with 71 contact and 68 contact, that's going to help you as a good base. And if you can really focus in on these things to start off with, I think that he'll be serviceable at the plate. His vision, discipline, and batting clutch aren't bad at all. Again, they just need a tiny bit of work and this guy's going to be pretty solid at the plate. But defensively speaking, he needs a little bit more work, but I like the arm that he's able to build upon. He's got that 70 arm strength to start off with, which is what you like to see out of a third baseman to be able to get more of those uh, throwouts at first base and whatnot from the, the far side of the infield. And again, this is going to be a guy that has a quirk. So this is a day player, performs better when playing day games, which is going to be helpful to you because you do play a lot of day games. I mean, obviously not all of them, but that's going to help you out. And at 28 years old, B potential, it's not like he's a top end prospect. It's not like he's going to cost you a lot. And he also has the flexibility to play second base, shortstop, and both corner outfield spots, which is again, a place where that big arm or potentially big arm is going to help you out if you can develop it. I also have to go back real quick because I forgot to mention Yandy Diaz, who has six quirks that are going to be helpful to him. Road Warrior, Night Player, Unfazed, Deadeye, Situational Hitter, and Table Setter. This was the only other player that I forgot to mention his quirks on. The next player to highlight at the third base position is Jose Miranda, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. A B potential, 70 overall, 24-year-old. Again, probably going to be a relatively expensive player to add to your team, but brings quite a bit to the table with a really good bat to start off with 69 contact versus right 74 versus left 87 power versus lefties decent vision to start off with not great plate discipline but good clutch as well you just are gonna really have to work on this guy as a defensive player this might just end up being a player that plays a little bit more dh for you than anything because of how good he can be at the plate but i really think you can develop this guy into a really solid overall player i wanted to point this guy out because i don't know that anybody would initially pick him out as their future third baseman because of his lack of defensive capability. He's also going to provide the unfazed quirk, which is going to help him excel when hitting with two strikes, which is a fantastic ability to have on a prospect. And then it's hard to talk about third baseman and not address Luis Guillaume, and I'm probably again saying that one incorrectly, but hopefully I'm not too far off, who's going to provide 88 contact versus right, 80 plate vision, 83 plate discipline. Unfortunately, not very good batting clutch, but pretty good fielding capability as well with 74 fielding, 81 accuracy, and 78 reaction. His arm's not very strong, but as a C potential 67 overall, 28 years old, you'll be able to get a couple of decent years out of him hopefully a little bit of development still since he's only in that d potential range right now he'll go up whenever you add him to your roster and he's able to play second base and shortstop so he can move around in your infield he's going to be reliable in the infield i'd say maybe more so as a second baseman type of a player because of his fielding capabilities without the arm so he might play better over there but a player that i think you should try to add to your system if you're looking for an infield type of a player a third baseman that has has that defensive capability and also adds something at the plate for an inexpensive deal. You're not going to have to give up a whole lot to get this guy onto your team. And off of the Mets, I think that you'll be able to acquire him pretty quick, pretty easy, and he'll provide value immediately to your roster. He's also going to have the table setter quirk, which is going to allow him to perform better when no runners are on, which makes sense because he doesn't have that clutch rating. So you're going to want to put this guy into your lineup in a spot where he's going to be able to get on base for you, which makes sense for that good contact vision and discipline. 
Another great player to highlight here is going to be Austin Martin, the third baseman for the Twins affiliate, a 66 overall C potential player that has a lot of position flexibility, being able to play at shortstop, left field, center field, and right field. 24 years old, he's going to be a player that you're going to want to look out for to develop because he has athleticism that is somewhat rare at the third base position. 82 speed is a really good starting range for a young player like this with already decent stealing and base running aggression you'll be able to get some good performance while he's on base for you. He starts off with a kind of rounded skill set, not well-rounded necessarily, but a player that needs to develop still the same. He starts off with 50-plus in all of his fielding categories, 50-plus on contact for both sides, 45-plus for power on both sides, and 50 vision, 50 discipline, 47 clutch, 45 bunting for both categories. So he's going to be able to do it all for you once you really develop him up, and at 20 24 years old, I think you will really be able to develop him up at that 66 overall. And with the next to last spot on this list, I wanted to give you guys a player that has a big arm. So we were able to find Nolan James out here, who is exactly that, a prospect with a big arm that you're going to develop into a very good defensive third baseman with a little bit of added plate value on top of that. 66 overall, 24 years old with B potential, able to play first base, left field, and right field, though you're probably not going to have him play those positions because you're going to have a great arm at third base that's going to be your cornerstone for your infield. This guy at 24 years old already provides 99 arm strength and again, 24 years old, you're going to be able to build this guy up to be an excellent player. He's got 56 fielding, 67 arm accuracy, and 47 reaction, so his arm is already well above average for players at the position, or players in general in franchise mode. He just needs to work on his fielding capability a little bit, and develop some ability to add value at the plate. Starting off with that 63 contact versus right is not the worst thing in the world, though. This is a player that I could see you guys utilizing very quickly in franchise mode, very quickly going to be able to develop to a serviceable point, and again, very quickly going to be able to develop up to an excellent ball player for you. There are a handful of other players that we could have added to this list, but in the 10th spot, I wanted to give you guys just another inexpensive, super young developmental option that is going to provide a ton of value in the long run for your franchise in Jacob Raymer, New York Mets third baseman. This guy already starts off fantastic fantastic on the defensive side of the ball so you know you'll be able to plug him in and he's not going to be a liability on that end in any level of your organization good fielding decent arm to start off with decent arm accuracy and decent reaction he just needs to develop his other skills at 19 years old though and a 67 overall c potential he's going to be able to do that no problem he starts off with a base of 50 plus contact on both sides 45 plus power on both sides this is pretty much textbook C potential guy that you want to add to your organization and you know he'll develop into a solid player that you might be able to utilize in the offensive and defensive aspects of your game, but also might become just a really valuable trade piece for your organization. I recommend that no matter what you do, you just go out and add this guy to your organization because like I said, at a 64 overall C potential, 19 years old, he's going to develop into a solid ball player at some point into his 20s, which makes him a valuable piece to your organization. So again, that's been 10 hidden gem third baseman that I think you guys should be on the lookout to add to your roster in MLB The Show 23 that are going to help you in franchise mode. Leave a like down below, comment and subscribe to help drive the YouTube algorithm if you want to see this channel continue to succeed. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a good one.